So we discuss about what is area moment of inertia, what is polar moment of inertia, what is rigidity of variation. So all these things we discussed. And to identify what will be the values of this moment of inertia for different cross section, we found out an integration approach. So where if you are, if you want i x x, so moment of inertia with respect to x axis, that will be equal to integral. So one third of y cubed dx. So integral one third of y cubed dx. So considering only vertical strip, right? We use this as a formula, right? So similarly, uh, if I want to identify what is the moment of inertia with respect to y y, so it is integral x square y dx, right? So after this, we also discussed a theorem called as parallel axis theorem. So which is i x x is equal to so moment of inertia with respect to the centroidal axis plus area into your distance distance square right for example this is my centroidal location this is my centroidal location so i want moment of inertia with respect to this one ixx so this ixe right so the distance with respect to this two axis that is d so we will identify what is your d square and a is the overall area of the cross section right so if i want moment of inertia at this location ixx then so it is ixc moment of inertia with respect to the central axis plus area into in the distance between these things right so these are the things we discussed last class right now we will go for identifying moment of inertia by integral approach for a rectangle so let me consider you have a rectangle uh, section like this. So which is having breadth B and height H, right? So to identify what is the moment of inertia with respect to this, so what I will do is I am going to consider a vertical strip, okay? So let me consider a vertical strip with respect to this. So this is my vertical strip, okay? So this is my vertical strip, which is here so the distance with respect to this vertical strip is x the distance with respect to this is x and the overall height of this is y the overall height so overall height is this one which is y right according to this rectangle we know that your y is nothing but h Right, because this height is equal to your height of your rectangle. Right now, let us identify what is the moment of inertia with respect to xx, with respect to xx, and with respect to y1. Right, so this is the moment of inertia. Right, so you know the formula ixx is integral to so one third of y cube dx. Actually, uh, we can write this as a different formula. It, it, the real formula is integral uh, 1 by 3 y square dA. So this dA is nothing but y into dx. Right? So that is what you are getting it here. Right? So I don't want to confuse with respect to this dx uh, because we have a step again. So you know that this is my dx. This is my dx and this is my y. So y into dx is what we are getting. So instead of using it, I am using it directly, right? So the a I have converted to dx. Okay, right. So the limit for this is it starts from zero because you have a considered a vertical strip. For the vertical strip, it starts from zero and then set b. So my limit is zero to b. Right, and you know that this y is nothing but h, right? So in that case. I can replace it. It is integral zero to b. One third is a common third. So I will take it out. So y cube, I can write as h cube dx. Right? So now if I integrate it, so everything is a constant. So when I integrate, what we get, I will get h cube by 3 x under the limit zero to b. Right? So I will get i x x. So this ixx is nothing but 
b h cube by 3 b h cube by 3 so this is my first term this is my first term i will consider this as one equation right so this is equation one right so similarly so we also identify we can also identify for i y y so let's go for i y y right so your i y y is integral again the limit is zero to b x square y dx so this is the formula right so where i can write it like this so y is nothing but h so h i can take it out it is integral zero to b x square dx when i integrate it so you will get h into x cube by 3 under the limit 0 to b right so i y y now what i get is h b cube by 3 right previously we got b h cube by 3 now we got we are getting h b cube by 3 so this is the next equation so equation two right so when you look here this moment of inertia is on the base it is not with respect to the centroid right so we need formula only with respect to the centroid and location so my central location is here right so the central and location distance if we consider uh, it is h by 2 right it is h by 2 and with respect to this is b by 2 right so based on this i am going to apply parallel axis theorem to identify what is the moment of inertia with respect to the center right because in that in this terms i have ixx which is what we identify from integration i can identify area i can identify distance only unknown data is ixc moment of inertia with respect to center right let us identify that okay so according to parallel axis theorem we know that ixx is equal to so ixc plus area into d square right so area into d square so i i need moment of inertia with respect to x so my distance is uh, vertical so it is force into perpendicular distance which means my distance is h by 2 right my d is nothing but h by 2 in this case so in that case so i can write it as ixx is equal to ixc plus area is base into height i can write that into your d is h by 2 so h by 2 the whole square right we know what is the formula for ix which we identified right we identify b h cube by 3 so let me substitute it so it is b h cube by 3 is equal to ixc plus so again this is b h cube by 4 right so i want i x c so i x c is nothing but b h cube by 3 minus b h cube by 4 right so what you will get so you will get this is equal to your 12 is the common term so 4 b h cube minus 3 b h cube right so i get a final formula so my ixc is b h cube by 12 right this is the main formula with respect so moment of inertia with respect to the centroidal axis right so again if you look at this i y y it is h cube by 3 so this is b h cube by 3 this is h cube by 3 what happens to your d d is instead of h we have b by 2 right h by 2 instead of h by 2 we have b by 2 so again if you solve it you will get the same formula but in a different approach. so you will get i y c will be equal to h b cube by 12. okay this is the next formula which is this is with respect to i y y right i am not going to solve that you can try it out you will get the same thing so let me consider a triangle like this so again you have a base and you have a height right so what happens is you are going to consider the strip 
right? One vertical strip here, right? With respect to this. And I am going to consider this strip as Y. So this is Y. Right? And this distance is X. So we know that this distance is X. Okay. So let us identify. So I want to identify what is IXX. So my IXX will be equal to integral one third of y cube dx right so i need y in terms of x because we have a term in terms of dx right so i need y in terms of x so what i do i am going to apply this uh, similarity triangle right so base by base a smaller triangle base divided by your bigger triangle base whatever it is you can do that right so i'm going to use that so this is my smaller triangle. So smaller triangle base uh, height. Let me consider height. Height is y divided by base x is equal to bigger triangle height, which is h divided by your base b. Right. So y by x, h by b. Right. Now I can able to identify what is my y. Right, so y is h by b into x. Right, this is my y term. So now I can use this. Right, so now if I want to identify what is ixx, so ixx is, is equal to integral 0 to b. Again, the limit is same, it starts from 0 and it ends at b. Right, so ixx is equal to 0 to b, 1 by 3, h by bx, the whole cube dx right so which i can write it as h cube by 3 b cube it's a common term integral 0 to b x cube dx so integrating this h cube by 3 b cube so x cube if i integrate i will get x power 4 by 4 then it is 0 to b right so what I will get is, I will get B H cube by 12, right? B H cube by 12. So this is I X X, right? So this is the term I X X. So again, so this is also with respect to the axis, not with respect to your uh, uh, centroidal location, right? So we can say this is equation one. Now, we will proceed with the next term, which is IYY. So, your IYY is integral 0 to B, X square Y DX. Right? So, in this case, what you will get? You will get is equal to integral 0 to B. Y, I can write as in terms of HB by X, H by B X. Right? So, what I will get? I will get h by b x cube dx right h by b x cube dx so again i can take those h by b outside when i integrate this x cube i will get x power 4 by 4 right my limit is from 0 to b right so what i will get is i will get h b cube by 4 this is i y Okay, so let me consider this triangle. So the central location for this triangle is somewhere here, right? So if I consider what is my uh, y distance, it is from the base, it is h by 3. From the base, it is h by 3. So if I consider your x distance from the apex, it is from the apex, right? So from the apex. Right from the apex, it is 2 by 3b. It is 2 by 3b. Right now, we will apply parallel axis theorem. We know that ixx is equal to ixc plus area into d square. Right, so ixx is what we identified earlier. So, my ixx is bh cube by 12. 
so let me write b h cube by 12 is equal to i x c is what i am going to need by plus area of the triangle is half into base into height so i write as b h by 2 into your distance distance is a vertical distance for x x x you, you have to look after the vertical distance your vertical distance is h by 3 so which means h by 3 we call square okay so what i will get i will get ixc is equal to b h cube by 12 minus b h cube by uh this is 9 9 to 18 right yeah? so in this so you have 12 and 18 so your lcm for this is 36 it's a common lcm is 36 so this you can multiply by 3 to get this 36 so you get 3 bh cube minus for this i can multiply with 2 right so 2 bh cube so my ixc formula is bh cube by 36 with respect to the centroid location right so this is my formula for a triangle okay similarly let us proceed with your uh, uh, iyy so iyy is again iyc plus area into d square so i y y what we identified is h b cube by 4 so it is h b cube by 4 is equal to i y c so moment of answer with respect to the center and y axis plus area area is so b h by 2 into distance so for y i should look after the x distance x distance is 2 by 3 b so into 2 by 3 b the whole square right so what i will get i will get i y c which is equal to h b cube by 4 minus so what i will get i will get again h b cube divided by so this 2 this 2 gets cancelled 1 2 is getting cancelled as you have another 2 here and i have 9 here right so 3 3 is 9 and in this 1 2 gets cancelled right 1 2 gets cancelled here right so remaining 2 is here right so now what i can do i will get i y c is equal to so the common lcm term is 36 right 9 4 are 36 so 9 h b cube minus so again so what will get so this is nine here here i have to multiply with four so two into four you will get eight eight h b cube okay so now i will get again i y c is equal to h b cube by 36 right so you can see the difference so both are similar for right angle triangle uh, one is b h cube by 36 other one is h b cube by 36 right so there may be a little bit confusion uh, in identifying which formula whether i have to use b h cube by 36 or h b cube by 36 so if i consider this triangle if i want i x c so you look after the dimension with respect to this x axis my x axis dimension is b right that will be a single term the perpendicular one will be a uh, cube right so in that case i will write as b h cube by 36 if i want i y y so parallel to this y axis the dimension is h so which is h b cube by 36 right so this is applicable for any uh, objects so for either it's a rectangle or a triangle or a semicircle circle whatever it is you can use that right so whatever which is parallel to that particular axis that is uh, having one power power one the other will have power three right so the total so your unit is mm power four or meter power four so 
let me consider you have a, an object like this, a parabolic shape. They are asking you to identify IXX and IYA, so not IXC. Okay, so be clear. They are asking only what is your moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis and what is the moment of inertia with respect to y x. Okay, so these are the two terms they are asking to identify. Okay, right. So the first thing is I want to identify y. So they are given an equation. So they are given y is equal to k x square. This is the equation they are given. The first term is I have to identify what is the, this constant k, right? So for that, we know that when x is equal to a, when x is equal to a, what happens? Your y is b. Your y is b. Substitute this in this. What you'll get? Your, your y is b. b is equal to k into a square. So in that case, I will get what is the value of k. So k is nothing but b by a square. Right? So now I will replace this equation. My equation is... This is my equation. So y is equal to b by a square x square. Right? This is my equation. Now I will proceed with our usual procedure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider a rectangle, a uh, uh, small strip. Right? So this strip is having a distance of y you can able to identify by using this equation, right? And this distance is x, right? So the step is starting. So if I expand my step, it will start from zero and it goes up to a, right? So my integral limit is from zero to a, right? Okay, now we'll go for ixx. So the formula for ixx is integral zero to a because my limit is from zero to a. So one third of y cube dx, right? I'll go for the same thing. So it is one third of integral zero to a y cube dx. So y we know it is b a square x square, right? So what I can do, I can enter, I can write this. So integral zero to a, so b by a square x square, power 3 dx, right? So which means I will get 1 by 3. So b cube, I can take it out. a square into cube, so a power 6, I can take it out. The remaining integral 0 to a, so x power 6 dx, right? So integrate this. So when I integrate, what I'll get? I will get uh, b cube by 3 a power 6. So x power 7 by 7 under the limit 0 to a, right? So when I apply the limit, so a power 7, a power 6, it gets cancelled. So what is that? I will get a b cube divided by, so 7 into 3, 21, right? This is my i axis. This is the value of my i axis. So similarly, I can also identify for IYY, right? So you know what is the formula for IYY. So IYY is equal to integral 0 to A, x square y dx, right? So let me substitute it. So it is integral 0 to A, x square your y, we know that y is b a square x square. So your y is b by a square. Yeah, b by a square into x square. So into dx. Right? So let me take the common term outside. So b by a square is a common term. I will take it out. So integral 0 to a, x power 4, right, x power 4 dx, right. So integrate it, so you will get b by a square, x power 4 is x power 5 by 5, under the limit 0 to a, right. So what will get b by 
a square a power 5 by 5 right so you can able to see that the square will get cancelled to 3 so you will get i y y is equal to b a cube by Right, this is my I one one. So if I consider here, so let me expand it a little bit. Right, so if I consider here, I'm going to consider a vertical strip. My vertical strip is here. Right, so this is my vertical strip. Right, so to identify the value of this vertical strip, right, so you can able to see that. So there are two options. So one is y, this equation, this is y2. Right, so we can able to see here. So this one, so from here to here, so it is y2. And here to here, it is y1. So if I want to identify what is the height of this step, my height of the strip here, height of the strip is nothing but y2 minus y1. Right, subtracting this and this, I'll get what is the height of my strip. Okay, and if I increase the strip, it will be expanding and it starts from 0 and up to a. Right, my limit is from 0 to a. So, what is my limit? My limit is. 0 to u. Right? Okay, so as usual, let us identify what are the constants. So what is your m, what is your k? So let me go one by one. Let me consider the first equation. So y1 is equal to kx, kx squared. Okay? So when x is equal to a, your y1 is b. So when x is equal to a, what happens? Your y1 is b. Let me substitute it in this equation, right? Let me substitute in this equation. What will get? I will get b is equal to k a square, which means I will get k is equal to b by a square, right? So in that case, my y1 is nothing but b by a square x square, right? This is my first equation so for this particular curve. Similarly, let us go for the second curve. So y2. So y2 they call it as mx. So again, when x is equal to a, your y2 is also b. You can also see. So when x is equal to a, your y2 is also b. Right? So let me substitute these things. So what you'll get? Uh, b is equal to m into a. So which means I will get m is equal to b by a. So in that case, my y2 is nothing but b by a x. Right? So these are the two equations, right? So which we are going to apply, right? So for uh, this particular problem, right? So with respect to your b and x, right? So now we will proceed. So we have to identify what is our moment of inertia with respect to xx. We know the formula. So moment of inertia with respect to xx is integral one third of y cube dx. The term y indicates here nothing but height of the strip. Right? The term y here indicates your height of the strip which means one third integral zero to a. So my limit is zero to a, right? So it is not like, see, uh, height of this, don't substitute it directly, right? It, it has to be like, uh, individually it is y1 square minus y2 square. You should substitute it. Don't put it as uh, y2 minus y1 the whole cube, right? That, that is wrong. Okay, so here, what is my formula is, it is nothing but, uh, you can able to see that it is y2 and y1, right? So, 
the formula here will be y2 cube minus y1 cube dx. Okay. Don't put us y2 minus y1 the whole cube, right? That is different. Okay. So this is the curve which has to be considered individually. What I am doing is I am identifying moment of inertia for this y1 alone separately. Then this y2 alone separately, I am subtracting this two. It is like our composite material, uh, considering the entire uh, term and subtracting with the other one, right? What you are done in the center, same concept here. So don't substitute it directly. So it should be separate. Okay, that's why we give this as a term, right? So this is equal to one third integral zero to a y2 so y2 is b by a x right so what i'll get i'll get b square b i think uh, b cube by a cube into x cube right this is my y2 minus y1 so y1 is b a square x square right so which means i can write as b b is uh, 1 so this b cube a square is a power 6 x square is x power 6 right under the limit dx right the common term here is this 1 1 by 3 right so this is equal to again i will get 1 by 3 let me integrate this right so b cube by a cube is a common term here. So x cube in the integrator will get x power 4 by 4. The limit is from 0 to 2. Minus b cube by a power 6 is a common term here. And when I integrate this x power 6, I will get x power 7 by 7 under limit 0 to a. Okay. So let us substitute it. So 1 by 3. So b cube, a power 4, a cube gets cancelled. So we'll get a b cube by 4 minus b cube, uh, a power 6, a power 7 gets cancelled. Again, you'll get a b cube divided by 7. Right? So the common term here is a LCM of 28. Right? So 1 by 3. LCM is 28. So you'll get 7a cube minus 4ab cube. Right? So what you'll get? You'll get 7 minus 4 is 3. Right? So 1 by 3 into 3ab cube divided by 28. So this 2. So this 3 and this 3 gets cancelled. So I will get ixx is equal to a b cube by 28. Right? Any doubt in this? No, sir. Okay. Now we will proceed with iyy. I, Y, Y is integral x square y dx. The limit is again 0 to a. Right? So, which is equal to integral 0 to a x square. Y is again height of the step, which is y2 minus y1 into dx. Right? So, which means, so you know the values integral 0 to a x square so your y square i can i can write it as so y2 oh sorry y2 i can write it as uh, b by a x so this is b by a x minus y1 i can write it as b by a square x square so b by a square x square right i into dx this is what i am getting so now I can separately integrate. So integral b by a is a common term for the first term. Integral 0 to a x cube 
dx i for the first term minus uh, b by a square is a common term for the second integration c0 to a so x square and x square right x power 4 dx right so let us integrate so you get b by a the limit x cubed you will get x power 4 by 4 under the limit 0 to a minus b by a square you will get x power 5 of 5 by 5 under the limit 0 to a okay so a a gets cancelled you will get b a cube by 4 minus again a square a, a square gets considered remaining is a cube right so again b a cube by 5 right so which means so i will get so 20 so when i cross multiply you will get b a cube by 20 this is my i point. right so so this is how you have to identify your moment of inertia uh, by integration approach for different uh, uh, materials, right? When they ask you to do it in integration, you can do it. So for moment of inertia with respect to uh, common shapes, right? So you have a rectangle, you have a circle, and uh, we have other terms. So right angle, triangle, and other things. If I consider for a rectangle, right? So I will write it here separately. So even though the picture is not so clear. So everything is with respect to center, right? So everything is with respect to centroidal axis. So because that is a common term, so you will get the formula. So that will be better, right? So for a rectangle, Ixx will be b h cube by 12 so what we discussed and your i y y will be h b cube by 12 this is the formula right so this is the formula for your rectangle so for right angle to triangle so again this also we discussed your i x x is b h cube by 36 and your i y y is Hb cube by 36 is a common term. Right? This is for a right angle triangle. So for isosceles triangle, something like this. So here you can able to say there are two right angle triangles which is kept symmetrically. So like a mirror image. Right? In this case, your formula will change a little bit. Your Ixx is bh cube by 36. There is no change in your Ixx. But your i y y will be h b cube by 48. Right? h b cube by 48. So this is for isosceles triangle, symmetrical triangles. Right? So mostly you will get a right angle triangle. Uh, and even if there is a small deviation right angle triangle also, we can use h b cube, h -B cube by 36. Only if it is a symmetrical triangle, we can use hb cube by 48, right? Similarly, for a circle, right? For a circle with respect to the centroid, your ixx and iyy both are same because it is symmetrical, right? So in that case, uh, your ixx or iyy is pi by d power 4. So pi d power 4 by 64, right? I am telling in terms of diameter. If I want in terms of radius, it is pi r power 4 by 4. Right? So I have practiced more most of the formulas related to the diameter. So that's why I am writing in terms of diameter. Right? So it is pi d power 4 by 64. Right? This is for a circle. For a semicircle, right? You have a formula like this. So you are let me consider you have a semicircle like this. So in that case, your Ixx, right? Your Ixx with respect to the central location, right? Is nothing but 0 0.109 r power 4. Your Ixx is 
with respect to this centroidal location 0 0.109 r per foot your i y y is so pi d power 4 by 128 so i am writing in diameter okay so 64 into 2 right so you will get 128 okay so r you can also see that it is pi r power 4 by 8 so whereas here it is pi r power 4 by 4 right so these are some basics uh, uh, centroidal formulas, sorry, uh, moment of inertia formulas. Other than this, you should know what is your parallel axis theorem, right? So if you we, if we know this, we can directly go for the problem. With the, so we will make a try. We will make similar type of approach. So what I have to do is I'm going to create a table, which is having uh, is, now this table is bigger now, right? So the table relates with section area x bar y bar a x bar a y bar so this is the table what we discussed for centroid the same table along with this i am going to include four more data ixe moment of inertia with respect to the centroidal x axis iyc moment of inertia with respect to the centroidal y axis ixx Moment of inertia by applying parallel axis theorem, I Y Y. Moment of inertia with respect to parallel axis, with respect to Y axis, right? So this four term will be added again, and you get a bigger table. So filling up all these tables, you will get the values, and similar to the sigma I I X X, you will get what is the moment of inertia for the entire section. So that's it for today. We'll stop here. We will continue in the next class.